Um, but what I'm trying to do is get custody of my grandchild. Uh, through, uh, they told me I have to go through the resource family services uh, as a grandparent, and I've been put some roadblocks in front of me. Uh, one, dealing with my name on a lease and criminal charges from 20, 24 years ago. California. Barbara, do you have a question to ask or a story to tell? I have a couple of questions to ask. Thank you. Um, the first one is, I was granted um, de facto parent status, um, not for custody of my grandchild, but um, at least to go to all the court hearings. Um, but what I'm trying to do is get custody of my grandchild uh, through, uh, they told me I have to go through the resource family services. Uh, as a grandparent, and I've been put some roadblocks in front of me. Uh, one, dealing with my name on a lease and criminal charges from 20, 24 years ago. And I was wondering if that's possible to go back that far, that they can hold that against me. I've seen him try to go back 30 years, Barbara. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so it's very possible. Oh, it's possible, but, it, you know, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And it depends on what the charge was. I won't ask you what the charge was, but, you know, was it, um, you know, child abuse? Was it uh, a DUI? No. You know, was it a DUI? Was it robbing a bank? You know, was it drug sales? You know, it depends on what, mm -hmm. you know, what it was for. But, by the way, I want to tell you and tell everyone the resource thing is not the only way to get a child placed with you, okay? Okay. The judge can place the child, and so can the social worker, through what's called an emer emergency placement. They can place the child with you while they investigate, and even if you have a 24-year-old conviction, you know, that's probably one of those things that you might get an exemption from, you know, a waiver, where it won't even count against you. Mm -hmm. so, so there's, you know, there's many ways to skin the cat. You can file a 388 petition to uh, request the judge to have a hearing to have the child placed with you. You know, so there's several things that you can do. Now, if the social worker says, no, I'm not going to do it, and you don't do anything, what's the Vince Davis rule? Then the social worker will get her way. If you're going to challenge the social worker, you got to go to court, you got to file something and approve something to the judge. Okay, and the best way to do that would be through the 388 form? 388. Now, here's the thing, you know, for people in California, just filling out the 388 means nothing. All right? It just, you're basically knocking on the door. You don't even have a foot in the door yet. Are you going to fill out the 388 the right way? Are you going to provide the right information and evidence in the 388 that's going to be admissible? Are you going to present the right legal arguments to show the judge that you, you should be granted a hearing or that your 388 petition um, should be granted at all? You know, once you file the 388, and say you get over the hurdles of filing it, there's going to be a hearing. There's going, there might be even two hearings. Number one, there might be a hearing to decide if you even get a real 388 hearing. They call it the prima facie hearing. Then there's going to be, a, you know, assuming you get past that hurdle, then there's going to be another uh, hearing to assume that if you're going to, have you proved your case? All right? I... I this is several months ago. I, f I filed a 388 in a, in a court in Northern California, and I went through hell trying to get a hearing at the prima facie. I think we had two different court sessions about whether I should even get a 388 hearing. And then when I got the 388 hearing, you know, um, they had beaten up, beaten up the client so bad that, you know, we lost. We're, we're going to appeal that, but... You know, just, you know, doing the 388 route isn't just waving a magic wand and boom, you know, you're in. 
A lot of people think, mm -hmm. oh, I, I, I've seen that form online. I'm going to fill it out and turn it in. That's a bad strategy. Because typically, okay. typically, you know, they're going to try to argue you only get one bite at the apple. Although I think there's some case law about that, you being able to get more than one bite at the apple. But, you know, you want to try to put your best foot forward the first time. You were going to say okay. something? Yeah, I was going to ask also, um, besides that, should I keep continuing to try to get approvals through the resource family service? Yes, you can do that at the same time as well. You know, um, a law professor once gave me an example, and I'll give you this example. Say there's a wall, a wall okay, and there are five doors on that wall, all different doors. But mm -hmm. on the other side, there's the pot of gold. But you only have to get through one of those doors. So 388 would be door number one. Resource family might be door number two. You know, and there's going to be a third or a fourth or a fifth door. You should try all of them. Okay. But is, is a lease, or my name on a lease, actually required for my living status where I live? Not that I know of. you talk talking about for the resource family thing, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You see, I don't, they, they I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a resource family expert. That's relatively new in California, and there's talk about getting rid of it legislatively because it, it delays the placement of children with relatives. You know, th yeah. so this can take weeks, you know. In the old days, you go to court and say, hey, judge, I got a relative back there. It's the grandma. And they would place with the child with the grandma that day. Now everything has become so bureaucratic, you know, that I don't know that we're doing what's best for the family and especially best for the children. I don't feel that it is being grandma, being so close to my grandchild, and I can't get him to live with me, so. But, but, okay. here, but here's the thing, Barbara. Here's the thing, and I just asked Aaron this this evening. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to continue to go through resource family sources and find an attorney who can file this 388 because I'm sure I can't do it by myself. <laughs> Why don't you do this? Why don't you join our um, our group, our voting group, become a captain in your city or your county? That I would like to do very much. Okay. Because, you know, we can only change things if we go to the legislature and, and change the law. You know, sometimes I tell people okay. that sometimes cases are won outside of the courtroom. Mm -hmm. You know, because of things that happen between parties outside of the courtroom, statements that are made outside of the courtroom. You know, everything is not won in the courtroom. Hey, Barbara, I want to thank you for calling and thank you for listening. Um, call us back in a few weeks and give us an update on what's going on with your case, okay? Okay. Thank you very much, and you have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hey, Aaron, we have a few minutes. Did you have a question you wanted to ask me? Yes. Um, we have lots of questions. Um, so when a parent, uh, when a child is taken from the parent, and like this, this case in particular, there's families that can take the children other than, you know, all the red kids. Why is it so hard for the grandparents to get the children and, or, another question, I'm sure, um, why do they not put all the kids back at the same time? Why do they, like, leave one in foster care and then give two back? Well, there could be just returning the children. Okay. Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, you'd be surprised. Um, like the call we had earlier, uh, the mother had all the kids except for one, and it was right. alleged that the one in foster care was abusing one of the other children. And so, if they don't think the parent can deal with that or stop that, um, they might not return the child. I've seen a few cases where, you know, there was some type of incest between siblings, and they didn't mm -hmm. want to return them into the same home, and you know, for obvious reasons. So there could be okay. just many, many reasons why that's done. But what was the first question you asked me? Oh, why they don't, um, why it's grandparents? Right. Well, Two it, it, it just—it's not only grandparents; it's relatives in general 
for whatever reason, and I, you know, the reasons are varied on why they don't want to give kids to relatives or why they want to make it so difficult. You know, some of, sometimes they are, there are legitimate concerns. Sometimes mm -hmm. the concerns are not legitimate in my humble opinion. One of the right. things, one of the things that I see happening, and I don't know why, uh, you know, maybe it's, you know, it's up to the judge to decide. I'm not wearing the black robe. But I, I see a lot of judges giving a lot of, you know, discretion or leeway to the social workers. Mm -hmm. But every year, there are millions of dollars paid out uh, in settlements and judgments against social workers, in every, in, especially in Los Angeles County, because some social yeah. worker was untruthful about something. You know? And it seems that you know, the system is so over... Um, Yes. There's so much burden. There's it's over a pot, you know. Every, right. You would think that if there's family that wants to take them and to save the child, this heartbreak and this this separation, anxiety, and all this, that they would be more um, well, inclined to give to a family member. Well, it, it would seem that way, but maybe you should change some laws. Yeah, I think definitely. <laughs> All right. We need a lot of that happening. <laughs> okay, we got to take another break. This is The Secret, How to Fight Child Protective Services and When. We'll be right back after these messages. Mm -hmm. 